Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Bus Capacitors for Immobility Inverters. So here is the problem I'm discussing in this presentation. We have a system here for driving a motor, something of this nature. It's a three-phase inverter. Here's the motor. We do have a battery. There is a capacitor bank. And I'm showing here the strain inductance for the cable connecting the battery to the actual inverter. Now, as these transistors are switching, being modulated, the current, say, of this transistor, for example, will look something of this nature. The average is a sinusoidal waveform. This is the current of the phase, okay? This will be the current here, while the transistor itself is turning on and off. And here we have actually the current and the average is the average current of the phase. So now the problem I'm addressing in this presentation is how to choose the capacitors for carrying the current, the ripple current of the bus. Now there is a current which is flowing here. All these transistors are toggling. This is one transistor, there is another one, there is another one. So overall, we're going to have a lot of AC components here and we want to capture them in, with this capacitor bank. The part of the AC, the high frequency AC that will flow here, is really small as we'll see later on. So the question that I'm posing here, how to choose this capacitor? So the consideration are that, first of all, we want a certain ripple. We don't want the ripple, the vol ripple voltage to be higher than a certain value. Now, another consideration, which turns out to be extremely severe, is the current limit that one capacitor can carry. That is, there is a maximum current, the capacitor can carry the AC current, and this is because a higher current will generate a lot of heat and it will damage the capacitor. There is a limit, the vendors, the manufacturer are specifying of the maximum current, maximum AC or ripple current per capacitor. Now, these two requirements really are not dependent. They are independent, and one has to consider each one of them separately. Of course, in some cases, they might be clashing. We'll see it later on. Now, the first thing to do is to find the AC current, the bus current. Now, I'm distinguishing between the continuous and the peak current. Continuous current is something that you have to take into account when looking for the ripple and maximum current of capacitor. And in continuous current, we mean a current that is flowing, say, more than uh, minutes or so. For a short time interval, say a few seconds, uh, there, is, there are other considerations because the heat generated over several tenths of a second is not high due to the large mass of the heatsink. So we have basically to worry about voltage ripple in the case of the current ripple we have to we can relax the requirements because the mass will damp the change in the temperature and therefore this can be relaxed the way to get the ac bus current is by simulation this is the best way to do well of course there are analytical expressions but it turns out that this ac current depends on many many parameters like the switching frequency, the type of modulation, there are various types of modulation, the modulation index, of course, the mass voltage and the phase current. The phase current is the most important parameter here. So I suggest that if you really like to get the AC bus current, run a simulation for the way you operate the inverter. So here is a simple example implementing PSIM, and I'm running here a case of a 60 volt bus voltage, 100 amp continuous phase current, and 20 kilohertz switching frequency with a modulation index of 0.5. So these are the conditions for the simulation. And here are some of the results. We see here the phase current. We see here the bus current with no DC, because what I did here, I've put here a filter such that this inductance is fairly high, it's one millihenry, very, very high. 
I mean, considering the impedance of the bus capacitor, and this is a very large capacitor. So all the AC is coming through here. So therefore I can see the AC component without the DC. Okay, here we see both the AC and the DC. So it'll take some walking in order to get the AC RMS, while here I'm getting the AC RMS current, the current that goes through the capacitor. Okay, so this is the current through the capacitor. As you can see, it's around zero, which means that there is no DC component here. And this is the phase current, and this is the filter current. As you can see, it's, it's basically DC. This is it's one amp. Uh, it's a DC of about 50 amp. Uh, this is the current here. And now zooming in, I can see the switching of the transistor, in fact, the resolution, the time resolution of this uh, simulation is not very good. I've been using a demo, which is kind of limited. So uh, this is not exact simulation, but for the purpose of uh, explanation, it's pretty good. This is the phase current that I caught in this particular minute. So we see that we can simulate the system very nicely and of course get the RMS. So here I have the RMS of the bus current. Okay, that is the capacitor current, the AC component, 61 amp. And this is the phase current, this is this current here, 100 amp. So you can see that the actual bus AC ripple current is sort of in the order of magnitude of half the phase current. And as the phase current will go up, this will go up proportionally. So the phase current is the most important dominant parameter that will affect the RMS of the ripple current of the bus. Next thing to do is to have a look at the FFT in order to see the frequency component that we have to deal with. Because of the type of modulation I've been using, we get the, the first harmonic, major first harmonic at 40 kilohertz, the switching frequency of 20 kilohertz, and then we have the higher harmonics. Now these are to be taken care of by ceramic capacitor, which are very effective because a high frequency, you don't need a high capacitance, and the ceramic capacitor are very good. They have a low ESR at high frequency, so then we'll see it later on. So these will be taken care of by ceramic capacitor, while well, the problem, the main problem we have to be concerned here as far as the ripple voltage and current is here in this area. The current, uh, the AC current, the ripple current of the bus, as I've said, will go primarily through these capacitors rather than through this, and I've done just a simple calculation here. If this stray inductance is, say, one, one microhenry, at 40 kilohertz, this is the first harmonic here, we have 0.24 ohm. Now the impedance of this capacitor will be much, much lower. We'll see it later on. So therefore you can say that all the AC, the, the high frequency, switching frequency based AC current is going through the capacitor. Very little is going uh, through the cables to the battery. Now the constraints are the ripple voltage, and the current per transistor. Now the ripple voltage will depend on the RMS and the total impedance of the capacitor that we have. Now the current per capacitor is how this current is being shared between the capacitors and there are various ways of, of course choosing the capacitor and we'll talk about it later. So if I have a ripple of say one volt RMS and the ripple current is 61 amp, then the impedance that I need for all the capacitor is the ripple over the RMS, turns out to be 16 million. So if it will be based on one capacitance, not necessarily one capacitor, but total capacitance, then we need here 250 microfarad for the 60 million impedance. Okay, that's not ESR, that's the impedance of the capacitor that will cause a ripple of one volt that I'm happy to live with, okay? So now is the time to search for various capacitors. Now, obviously in this short presentation, I cannot give an overview of all the possibilities. I've just picked up 
some capacitor so we can look at and see how they fare one against the other. So one candidate is a ceramic capacitor, 4.7 microfarad, 100 volt for the 60 volt. And here I'm showing the volume, okay, the volume of the capacitor is 10 millimeter cube per amp it can carry. Electrolytic capacitor, which has a much higher capacitance, has a volume of 1200 millimeter cube per amp, much, much larger volume than the ceramic capacitor. Let me just stress that I'm talking about low voltage application. For high voltage, say 400 volt consideration will be a bit different, and this shows up especially with the film capacitor. Film capacitor is best for high voltage. For low voltage, it's not very effective. You see that the volume here is 2000 millimeter cube per amp, very poor. You have to choose a high voltage capacitor because of the current. So they are not really well suited for low voltage. What about the area? We see that the ceramic will be only five millimeter square per amp, while the electrolytic, or the one that I've chosen, is 80 millimeters. So a ceramic capacitor is a very good choice in this application. Now, what about price? Well, it turns out that for this particular range, ceramic and electrolytic per amp, per amp is about the same. It's 25, it's uh, for large ones. Let's assume now a all ceramic situation. So we're talking about ceramic capacitor. First of all, we have to be aware that the capacitance of a ceramic capacitor, and X7R is a good choice, is dropping dramatically with the voltage on it. So if I choose a 100 volt capacitor and I operate it 60 volt, I have only 30%, about 30% of the capacitance. That is 1.4 microfarad rather than the nominal 4.7. It's a big difference. So I have to take this into account, obviously. Another thing I have to take into account is what is the ESR, which is highly frequency dependent. Now I'm talking about 40 kilohertz. The blue one is the ESR. And so I'm talking about per capacitor, per single capacitor is 25 million. Okay, that's about here. And then there is a question of current carrying capability. And this depends on the ESR, of course, and the heat uh, generated. But the vendor is actually giving us uh, this information. So we see that it, this is like uh, a uh, in between 10 kilohertz and 100 kilohertz. This will be the 40 kilohertz. We see that for, say, 20, 15 or 20 centigrade increase in temperature, okay, we can carry 1.5 amp. Of course, uh, for this, you need a larger copper area, but we understand now that one amp, one and a half amp per single capacitor is a reality. This is a small capacitor, a 12, 10 uh, size capacitor. So suppose all the capacitors are ceramic, okay? We need 250 microfarad. We have 1.4 microfarad per capacitor, so we would need 178 capacitors. Okay, now each capacitor can carry 1.5 amp. So the current carrying capability of all this bulk of capacitor would be 267. We need only 61. So it's an overkill, but it's okay. That is, if you are willing to live with 178 small ceramic capacitors, you need then this number, Obviously, the current per capacitor will be smaller because this is the maximum because uh, we it'll be 61 over this value. So each capacitor will carry a lot. So this is a reality. Of course, you can now look for a larger capacitance capacitor and with a lower current. This might be a better choice. I'm not going through it. I'm just saying that this could be a solution and uh, perhaps you can optimize it uh, somewhere about but choosing a capacitor a capacitor of different capacitance and current current carrying capability now what about 
an electronic capacitor. We need 250 microfarad. If I choose this particular capacitor of 180 microfarad, I need only two. However, each capacitor can carry only 1.8 amp, so we have only 3.6. That's too little. We can't use that. So if I just look at the current requirement and I divide uh, the 61 by, this should be 1.8, then I come up with 34 capacitors. This is 34 capacitor. And here, the selection is based on the current, not the capacitance. And if I use that many capacitors, each of 180 microfarad, the impedance would be much, much lower. And therefore, the ripple will be much, much lower. That's fine. There's no problem. I can live with that. Obviously, I started with one volt, but if I'm getting 40 millivolt, well, that's even better. But for that, I would need 34 capacitor of this 180 microfarad, not because of the capacitance, but because of the current carrying capability. There are many choices, of course. I've chosen uh, this 180. Here it is. 220 would be about 30 capacitor. I can choose this one, which is 470, still I, I need 20 for the current, okay, because each one is 3 amp times 20 is the 60 amp that I need. Now the, there is a question now of volume and cost. Again, I'm not going to, to go into this, but this is the question of optimization. If you like to go all electrolytic capacitor, then you have to optimize it. Now, even if you are going to base the design on electrolytic capacitor, which, are, by the way, have a shorter life than the ceramic capacitor, you still would like to have ceramic capacitor for the high frequency component. Very important because the electrolytic are not very effective for the high frequency. So there will be a mix, but the purpose of these will not be to carry the main current, but only the high frequency component. Sometimes we need to know what is the ESR of electrolytic capacitor. For example, if you like to run simulation, you like to know what is the ESR for this simulation model. Now, in some cases, the ESR is not given. So I'm showing here how to get it. What is normally given is the dissipation factor or the tangent delta, which is omega C ESR. Now, the omega here, it's not the operating frequency, it's the frequency at which this dissipation factor was measured. These are normally 60 hertz, 120, sometimes 1 kilohertz. You have to find what it is, because it's very important. You, you can't assume anything. You have to make sure that the number you get corresponds to a certain measuring frequency, okay? So once you know the measuring frequency, then you can calculate what is ESR from this equation. This is given in the table. For example, for this particular capacitor, it'll be dissipation factor. So I can find that the ESR for this 180 microfarad is 0.08, okay? I'm dividing now the tangents delta with these terms, except for the ESR, and I'm getting 0.59. So you see that the ESR of the uh, capacitor is much larger than the ceramic capacitor, which we found to be, for the single ceramic capacitor of 4.7 microfarad, we found to be 25 milliohm at 40 kilohertz. Here, it's 0.59. It's not again, it's not for 40 kilohertz. There is need a correction. But anyhow, we're talking about the order of magnitude larger. And this is why this capacitor cannot carry high current proportional to the capacitance. Okay. So to get the actual ESR at your operating frequency, uh, you still need to do some work. You have to, first of all, look at how the ripple allowed as a function of frequency. Okay, there is a correction factor. The current given in the table here is for 100 kilohertz. So now they are giving you this correction factor, which means that at 120 hertz, you can carry a ripple of 0.4. What does it mean? It means that the ESR at 
100 kilohertz is much lower than the one at 120 and 40 it will be even lower it will be somewhere in between here now we want the ESR here so we have now correct back and obviously what, what we have to do is to take the ESR at 120 that is found from the dissipation factor and then correct it by this ratio this 0.4 and this 40 kilohertz will be say 0.95 I'm getting 0.25 ohm so again I see that it's a factor of 10 larger than the single capacitor of 4.7 microfarad and again it's not only that it is times 10 the capacitance here is very large so proportionally we have a very high ESR as compared to the ceramic capacitor let's now look at a very general consideration rather than look into one particular capacitor so I'm going to develop here what I call a figure of merit for this capacitor in this particular application now the current will be equal to the ripple voltage times omega c this is actually v ripple over the impedance and the impedance is one over omega c so it comes out to be this expression so i can define now i over c of my requirement as omega times v ripple and i'll call this a figure of merit now the capacitor has a figure of merit of its own i over c you have to match this to the requirement and i'll show it later if you like to have two type of capacitors connected in parallel you want the figure of merit of these two to be very similar if not the current sharing will not be good so here are some examples if the ripple voltage that i'm specifying is one volt 40 kilohertz then the figure of merit of my problem you might say is 2.14 to the fifth the figure of merit of a ceramic capacitor that i've been talking about is 1.2 microfarad and 1.5 amp carrying current is 10 to the sixth that's excellent which means that this capacitor really meets the requirement a little bit more than required but that's fine and if you look here, you see that this capacitor, the 180, is kind of off because the I over C is too small. So if I'm now mixing the two, if I'm mixing the, uh, the electrolytic and ceramic capacitor, not just for the sake of uh, capturing here the high frequency component, but like current sharing, I like half of the current or part of the current of 20 kilohertz to go here and part here in this particular case for this particular capacitors it will not work properly you'll have a very high unbalance because the figure of merit of this capacitor is very much different obviously you can run simulation uh, on this and we see that we have seen how to extract the uh, say ESR of the electric capacitor obviously if you have a number of capacitor in parallel then the total capacitor is n times the capacitor and the ESR is divided by n you can add here the a stray inductance uh, of the model if you want of the capacitor and then you can run a simulation to see how the current is really split between these two branches so what are the conclusion of this uh, whole discussion here now if you use one type of capacitor say electrolytic and then plus of course uh, ceramic for the high frequency the way to go around is to calculate the impedance you need find the number of capacitor and to check that the current in each capacitor is smaller than the maximum allowable okay if not you'll have to add capacitor if you are using mixed time that is electrolytic and ceramic and you would like to get a, a current sharing of the major component of the ac you have to worry about the figure of merit that i've mentioned and another point to worry about is the fact that ceramic capacitor have a voltage drop uh, when they are imposed to a dc voltage so this has to be taken into account i'm stressing simulation 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 is the way to go to get all the information that you need because otherwise it's going to be extremely difficult and very tedious 
using analytical expression for the RMS and the splitting and the component, etc., etc. And simulation in this case is indeed very, very simple. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.